see how we use um, the sine mod to find a missing angle. You do it very similarly, okay? So if I ask you to find angle V, so if I ask you to find angle V, okay, um, I remember that we can use the sine law to find an unknown angle if, we, if two sides are known, two sides are known, and the angle opposite one of the sides is known. Angle 31 is opposite um, 5.8. Good, so I can use the sine law. So here, let's not get thrown by the fact that we don't have the letters A, B, and C. Okay, I'm going to rewrite the sine law with our new letters. What the, all the sine law tells us is the ratio of a side to the sine of its opposite angle uh, is equal for each side. Okay? So I know that V, the length of side V, over the sine of angle V is equal to the length of T. Okay? Here's length of T over the sine of angle T, which is equal to the length of U divided by the sine of angle U. Okay. It doesn't matter which order you write these in. The important thing is that all of these are just equal to each other, these three ratios. Let's plug in what we know now. Okay. So I know that um, angle T is 31. I know angle T is 31. I, know, I don't know angle U. I don't know angle V. Okay. I know side V. Side V is 11.1. So get rid of side V there. Side V is 11.1. And I know side T. Side T is 5.8. 5.8. Okay. Awesome. So I need to find angle V, so I have to use the ratio with angle V in there. And then the other ratio I'm going to use is the one that has both pieces of information subbed in. Okay? So this one here. I know um, I know side T and I know angle T, so if I use this ratio in combination with this ratio, I have three known pieces of information, one unknown, I can solve for that unknown. So let's set these ratios equal to each other, 11.1 .1 over sine V equals 5.8 over sine 31. Okay. Get rid of the fractions by cross multiplying. So do 11.1 .1 times sine 31, 11.1 .1 sine 31, that's equal to the other cross product of 5.8 times the sine of V. Okay? Now I want to get sine V by itself, I'm going to divide the 5.8 to the other side. I want to save a little room so I'm just going to erase it from here and divide it to the other side. 5.8 goes here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to evaluate this on my calculator. So that's 11.1 .1 times the sine of 31. Close my bracket and divide that by 5.8. Get equals. And I get this number here. I get sine V is equal to let me see if I can write that a little clearer. Sine V equals, it's a big long number here, I don't want to round it yet. It's 9.856 something 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 something. Okay? If I know the sine of angle V is equal to this number right here, in order to find angle V, I have to do the inverse sine of that big long number. So the inverse sine, <laughs> remember we use inverse sine to find um, angles. Okay? Inverse sine of 0 0.98 and so on. Okay? But we're going to use that whole, um, that whole number. We're not going to round it because we want our answer to be as accurate as possible. Okay? Never round before you get to your final answer. Okay? So in order to not round it, what I'm going to do from here, I'm not going to erase that answer yet. I need that in my calculator to know that's my answer. I'm going to do second sine. That brings up inverse sine of that answer. So I press second negative. That puts in answer. So the inverse sine of that answer is 80.3 once so I round it to the nearest 10. Okay? So angle V equals 80.3 degrees. Never round until you get to your final answer. Okay? Good. So let's do one more example. 
to find angle Y. So I need to find angle Y. Let's set up my ratios. Okay, so I know the length of Y over the sine of angle Y is equal to the length of X over the sine of angle X, which is equal to the length of Z over the sine of angle Z. Okay, and make sure you remember that um, side lengths get a lowercase letter and angles get an uppercase letter to help distinguish between the two. Okay, so let's fill in what we know. Um, I know the length of Y. I know the length of Y is 13. Side Y is opposite angle Y. I don't know angle Y, but the question asked me to find that, so I know I'm going to use that ratio. I know the length of X, and I also know the angle of X, so I'm going to sub those two pieces of information in. I know the length of X is 17, angle X is 65. Good, so I have now one, one ratio with both pieces of information um, subbed in. So I can use this ratio along with this one to solve for the one unknown. I have two ratios with three known and one unknown. I can solve that one unknown. Okay, so I'm not using this ratio at all. I don't know angle Z. I don't know side Z. That ratio is no use to us for this question. Okay, so let's go ahead and set these equal. So 13 over sine y equals 17 over sine 65. Get rid of the fractions by cross multiplying. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 13 by sine 65, put it on one side of the equal sign, then multiply 17 by sine y, put it on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so 13 sine 65. And the other side, I have 17 sine y. Get sine y by itself so that we can solve for y eventually. I'm going to divide the 17 to the other side. Because 17 is being multiplied on the right side, that means on the left side it is going to be divided. Okay, so I now know sine y is equal to, let's put this in on the calculator, 13 sine 65. Close my bracket, divide by 17. 0 0.693, 0, so on, so on, so on. Make sure you don't round yet. 0 0.693, so on. Okay, so I know angle Y is equal to inverse sine of that answer of 0 0.693, okay? So I'm just going to do second sign to get inverse sign of my answer. So inverse sign of that, I know the side ratio is this. To find um, the angle, I do inverse sign, and it gives me 43.9. I round it to the nearest tenth. So angle Y, angle Y equals 43.9 degrees. Okay, and and that's it. Okay, so you can use um, you can use the sine law in two cases, remember, um, to find an unknown side when two angles um, and a side are known, and then to find an unknown angle if you know two sides and an angle opposite one of the sides. So those are the two instances you can use the sine law. Tomorrow we'll learn the cosine law, um, and I'll explain when you can use the cosine law uh, tomorrow. Okay? So um, make sure you understood the examples. Hopefully you went through them with me and were able to try these on your calculator. Uh, any questions, let me know. And remember, if you want the proof of the sign law, just let me know and I'll post a video of that as well. Okay, see you guys.